The reporting is completely false on this. They were not peaceful protesters, and that's one of the big lies that the, the media is, is, is seems to be perpetuating. Three of my CBS well. peaceful let me, protests. Let me, let me get to this, because this has been totally obscured by the media. They broke into the Treasury Department, and uh, they were injuring police. Here's what the media is missing. This was not an operation to respond to that particular crowd. It was an operation to move the perimeter one block. Devout Catholic, Archbishop Gregory of Washington condemned what happened by gassing peaceful protesters. There, there was no gassing. Is, is that accurate? No, that's completely false. That's completely false. Uh, Sunday night. The president did not demand that? No, he did not demand that. Welcome back, America. I am Hugh Hewitt. What you just heard is William Barr, six times in his interview with Margaret Brennan, rightfully smashing the media's narrative. The narrative has nothing to do with the facts. The narrative, which is crafted by woke reporters, producers, editors, hosts, talking heads, is always wrong, is always from the left, is always covering for Democrats. This was the subject of a Long piece I have been working on for months, which appeared yesterday on the Washington Post and just appeared on the landing page at the Washington Post right now. I'm going to read it to you. If you go to WashingtonPost.com, you'll see on the right hand column, media heal thyself before it is too late. It reads thus. Remember, John Chancellor, it's fine if you don't. Very few people from the news media are remembered. Even Walter Cronkite has now faded to a pleasant boomer memory, and a not one very distinct either. I like John Chancellor. After David Brinkley, he was my favorite television broadcaster. Chancellor served as the anchor of NBC Nightly News from 1970 to 1982, moving to the central role on the network after Chet Huntley retired in 1970 and Brinkley graduated to commentator in 1971. Chancellor was, for me, the go-to news guy. I have no idea what his politics were. Chancellor was succeeded by the remarkable Tom Brokaw, then Brian William, and the chair now belongs to Lester Holt. Holt is perhaps the most trusted television anchor in news today. This is an essay I write in today's post on the collapse of trust in television news, especially cable news. Certainly a percent or two of the 330 million Americans trust a handful of broadcasters with whom they agree. Rush Limbaugh probably has the highest raw number of devoted listeners in the land who really trust him. And he has no one even remotely his equal on television. Radio gifts its proprietors with great dollops of time with which to build this trust. But there are far fewer Americans across the the vast political spectrum who trust anyone on television anymore. Anchors, analysts, or reporters, regardless of whether they purport to report or transparently opine. No trust. Zero. Gone. That's a problem. We need a free and fair television press that can be trusted. We will perish. We will perish as a free republic without it. And we don't have one now. The crisis of American television opinion is not journalism. The crisis of American television journalism is not that the left trust journalists who are obviously from the left, think Rachel Maddow, or that the right trust journalists who are from the right, think Tucker Carlson. No, that is a problem. The exclusive watching of left by left and right by right is a problem. The crisis is that the vast majority of Americans, the vast majority, believe with good reason that all talking heads on television are somewhere on the political spectrum and that all journalists, producers, and executives standing behind them bend the news to fit their politics. Trust in media has plummeted because most people think of television news when you say media. Journalists of all shapes, sizes, platforms, and personalities are presumed to be advancing an agenda because almost everyone on television is doing so. There are so few neutrals left on TV. For every lesser Holt, I can name 10 who are on Holt-like. What made early television broadcasters so trustworthy? Most of them had been to war, of course. Andy Rooney flew in a B-17 mission, reported from the front. Edward R. Murrow reported from the rooftops during the Blitz. By the way, Cronkite was in the war as well. 
the 8 million members of the U.S. military who returned from the war to civilian life and their families knew that the newsmen had been in harm's way. There was an earned respect. It endured for a time, and it was passed on to the next generation, chancellor among that group, and honored by the third generation of news people. It was Brokaw, after all, who coined the term the greatest generation and who earned the respect of those he obviously respected. There were others. But then it broke. It simply broke. It shattered, actually. Today, there is little to almost no trust in journalism generally because of the descent of television into infotainment. That the byline has become the brand in journalism is true, but it is particularly true for television. It is the host now, or the author, not the network or the paper or the station that triggers our trust or distrust. Some bylines evoke confidence. Others evince ridicule. Many invoke both. But very few chancellors remain. I don't want to cast glass, uh, stones from my glass house. So I'm not naming anyone in particular who's particularly untrustworthy. I just name people who are trustworthy in this essay. Again, it's on the front page of the Post right now if you go to WashingtonPost.com. I wonder how our collective house might be rebuilt. Since none of us can go to war, how do we get back to trust? From the convulsions of the past two decades, beginning with Bill Clinton's impeachment, followed by the Florida recount, 9-11 and war, and successive shocks of technological innovation, and now the events of 2020, can trust ever be reclaimed, especially for televised news? Yes. This is me opining in the Washington Post. Yes. But starting only from the recognition that a new birth has to occur with new faces and production teams, new mission statements, new executives who are not themselves casualties of the combat of the past three decades. Rome is in ruins, Rome being television news, but it can be rebuilt. How? Go and find the young men and women who have fought wars across the globe for the past 20 years. They are in their 30s and 40s now, as Cronkite, Murrow, and Rooney were when they began their on-air careers. Give them new teams of producers, writers, and editors trained in the not very difficult techniques of television. And it isn't that hard. From places far away from Manhattan and Beltway, Hollywood, and the Silicon Valley. Those are the huge power centers of America, and the new generation should not come from them. Charge these new people with reporting just the news. No opinions whatsoever mixed in. An instant discharge for intermingling with politics. A steel door reinforced with concrete and rebar should forbid the passage from politics to the televised screen. No more former congressional or White House staffers moving seamlessly to anchor chairs or analyst positions. Just the news, please, from people trained in the hard realities of the world. The infotainment complexes don't have to be dissolved. They make a lot of money for many people. They provide comfort food for the extremes of the country. But the hunger for trustworthy news is deep and vast, and it's unfulfilled right now. Someone is going to figure this out. A new brand is going to arise. A new cable news outlet with new faces and of no known politics. This isn't hard to do. It would work. The country needs it. It would be expensive to start, but if begun well and fairly, genuinely objective, ruthless in its, ruthless in its extirpation of political bias wherever it appeared, it would flourish and it would eventually turn a profit. No one from the cur current cable planets of left and right need apply. No one with a degree from journalism school, they are overrun by the left, should apply. The new William Paley, he founded CBS, he started this, television news. The new William Paley will do what the first one did. Find fearless men and women who have been at the front lines of real life and death struggles. Character required. In the near term, President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden can help begin the restoration of television news by handing all of the debates in the fall to C-SPAN, along with a list of acceptable moderators. I've written elsewhere that the model of an arbitration panel can be employed. Trump names one journalist, Biden names another, and those two agree on a third. But that's only necessary if they can't agree on moderators of known fairness, stature, and experience. Holt. John Dickerson of CBS, Dan Abash of CNN, 
There are others on whom the two candidates might agree. A closing aside, I moderated a panel last summer, summer ago, of three conservative personalities before an audience of many hundreds of under 40 influencers among the center right. There were people from all over the country in the audience. Families are invited to this gathering. It's an annual affair. The room was full. It was like a Catholic mass. The crying and chattering of babies and toddlers filled the background with a pleasant cacophony of normalcy versus the aridity that normally accompanies think tank panels. I asked that panel whom would they trust to moderate the debates and told them they could not pick a Fox News personality because the Democratic National Committee had banned Fox News from participating in its debates this year and last. So reality would have to be a check on their preferences. Not one of those three influencers could name a single member of the news business outside of Fox News whom they would trust. Not one. I expect a parallel gathering of the left's under 40 influencers would have no problem coming up with a dozen names. Thus the divide in the country's politics. Television news, both network and cable, is viewed by activists as occupied territory in the, par- in the partisan wars in which we are continually engulfed. C-SPAN is not. And as the producer of this fall's debate, it could perhaps find the host, maybe some of the panelists of the background I just detailed above. It would be a first step to ending the crisis of cable infotainment that strikes political life with wrecking balls 24-7. The whole shooting match needs to be supplemented and then supplanted by going back to the future. Go find the next John Chancellors. Start now. He and she are out there. They come in all sizes and shapes, but they have not committed to left or right. Give them a television network worthy of the modifier news. It does not now exist. And no better example exists than yesterday's Bill Barr telling Margaret Brennan repeatedly the news had failed in the last 10 days as it did, or Jake Tapper interviewing Colin Powell and not asking him a serious question after he proclaimed that Donald Trump had departed from the Constitution, when it is the Democrats on the Electoral College, on the expansion of the Supreme Court, on the end of the Senate filibuster, on any number of measures, on the judges they appoint, on their cheering for nationwide injunctions who have departed from the Constitution, the most ludicrous comment I have heard on television in years by Colin Powell, and unobjected to, no follow-up. Go and find my Washington Post editorial. Send it everywhere. It's on the front page of the Post right now. Ignore the comments. The nuts are out. They're like all the New York Times editorial staff that drove their, uh, the woke kids over at the New York Times that drove out their op-ed editor this weekend. What a crazy time. 